Welcome to the Tuttle and Klein Show. Notice that you're in the traditional black shirt. Ah, uh, yes. It's been yeah. a while since I've seen you in a black shirt. I know, I know. I'm trying to vary it up a little bit more, you know, a little spice. Well, I like it. I like it. Even though uh, if you peer into my closet, it looks like Johnny Bravo's closet. <laughs> the cartoon character. Yeah, sure. Yeah, whenever uh, my kids are here, they look in there and they they just laugh. They take pictures and post it. Why? They think it's funny. It's just all black. Just yeah. Like a, everything is black. You know, I got some color now, but, you know, before it was all black. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think you had a, a streak of what, maybe 10 years in a row that you wore black to work. I Yes, it was. Uh, I would say uh, 2010 until uh, 2021. Yeah. Yep. So makes the uh, wardrobe choice easy. Exactly. That's the thing. It's one less thing to worry about. We've talked about that before. You know, all the geniuses did that. It's Einstein and Jobs, Steve Jobs. And you said Zuckerberg with the same shirt. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I like to categorize myself as a genius. I, I don't think there would be a disagreement there. Oh, please. Well, I'm, I'm, su I'm such an idiot. It's unbelievable. Well, I, but numbers wise and in career wise, I would, I would say that's uh yeah. And your uh, Mensa score, your, your, uh, your IQ score is really high. Oh, don't, don't say anything about my IQ score. I don't want to ruin my reputation as being a, a complete knucklehead, Kevin Klein. Well, I mean, we made our living being a knucklehead, so. <laughs> but, but just to rehash it, I got every answer correct, except one on the IQ test. And I could have argued the one that they say I, I missed. So there you go. That's all I'm going to tell you. Uh, Kev, I, I don't know if you saw this or not, because, you know, you don't live in Texas anymore, but a big happenings this past weekend, the king of country music, George Strait. Uh-huh. Kyle Field, Texas A&M, breaks the uh, all-time record for largest ticketed show in the history of the United States of America. 110,000 people paid to watch the king of country music. Yeah, that that is, it's stunning. It, it really, it's amazing to have 110,000 paid patrons. <laughs> and the, the dude is 72. And from what I've heard, I was not there. Uh-huh. Uh, but from what I heard, it's as good a show as he's ever done. Uh, but uh, it, it, uh, not to knock George, the dude has se almost 70 number ones. He doesn't jump around on stage like Garth Brooks. It's, it's pretty, pretty mellow, you know? Yeah, he's not grinding it out. Exactly. So I he's mean, not, he's he, not like David Lee Roth doing backflips. <laughs> no, shit. no, uh, uh, hey, you don't go to a George Strait for that though. You go to a George Strait because you can sing every song, you can sing along, you know every song, and he's got a great voice. And, and people, uh, you know, are, have have been messaging me. Like, hey, did you go? Did you go? I thought I saw you. You know, I guess there's a, a couple doppelgangers. Tuttle doppelgangers out there because you know I had multiple people say I think I saw you were you in blah 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 section and this that and the other I did not go uh -huh. uh, based on principle principle yes I I attended his quote unquote last show at uh -oh. the Houston Rodeo uh, in 2014 and then you know I even uh, purchased the video of. You know, the Cowboy Rides Away Tour final show at AT&T Stadium in Dallas. So I, I feel robbed, to be honest with you, that that he has continued to put on shows. When I have the feeling, I had the feeling at the time that I was watching the last, you know? It's happened to me twice. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Fucking Ozzy. Same here! No more tours! Yeah! Remember that? No more tours back in the 90s. And man, Kev, I paid a premium because I was like seventh row for that. Well, and then the other one uh, that I paid a premium for was the 1999 Barbara Streisand at the MGM Grand. No, after this, I'm never going to play live again. Paid $1,500 a seat to sit in the fucking rafters. I know. Two years later, oh, I'm going out again. Oh, I remember how angry that made you, man. Oh, my God, dude. I, I I felt seriously because I paid so much for those Ozzy seventh row tickets. I want Ozzy. I, I couldn't enjoy his reality series with his kids as much because I just felt so ripped off. by. I mean, his it was called No More Tours Tour. Yep. 
Yeah. And lo and behold, he's had like five tours after that. He's still, dude is like on his deathbed and he still wants to do one more show. You heard about this, right? No. What's going on? He wants to reunite with the other three members of Black Sabbath and just do one show, uh, Birmingham, England, where he's That's from. That's where they're from. Yeah. And just do one show and call it goodbye. And the holdup is, uh, uh, the holdup I think is Bill Ward, the drummer. Just do it. Or you get another drummer, man. He wants the uh he wants the original lineup. Okay. I, Tony Iommi said he's open to it. Geezer Butler, well shit, he just wants to play. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> he he needs some money for drugs. <laughs> it's like, all right, yeah, bro. Oh, yeah, all right, you know. Yeah. Don't have to suck a cock anymore for drugs. <laughs> Jesus. I'm so sorry. He <laughs> probably does not do that. No, I think he's made enough money off of the residuals of Black Sabbath music. So but um, yeah, I, I I I don't even know what Ozzy would look like on stage right now. Yeah, I'd, that'd be interesting. Would, but you can you can always holograph it. If it gets bad, you can always holograph it. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, Kev, we talked about something um, last week that touched a nerve. What was it? Uh, we talked, and it wasn't us, you know. And, and this got huge uh, uh, response on our TikTok too. Um, and this was not our saying, we're just the messenger. What, you know, job interviewers have said about recent college graduates and some of the shocking things that recent college graduates have done and said in job interviews. And yeah, you know, I got a, uh, specifically a, uh, um, a lady DM me, her name's Connie. And it was, you know, involving the little factoid that parents, um, uh, actually go on the job interview on occasion in the modern era. They're actually there with their recent college graduate. Yeah. The which, percentage was almost 20%, one in five. Yeah. One in five uh, of uh, job interviews have experienced this where the applicant wants their parent to come in during the job interview. And I, it's shocking. That's an immediate red flag. You're, you're done. Yeah. Oh, Totally. So what was your DM? Uh, Connie says, um, you know, not only did I go out, uh, go with my daughter on her, on two of her inner job interviews uh, after college, uh, she says she even texts the guys that her daughter is dating for her. What? Yeah. Like, like when, with a, you know, she's texting back and forth with guys she's interested in. She hands the phone to her mom and her mom constructs the texts for her. Oh, Constance, come on. <laughs> yeah. I, I was shocked. And, and, and then, uh, you know, I fired back and, you know, it, most of what I do is tongue in cheek. Of course. Uh, I fired back. Wow. You're a horrible enabler. I mean, that is just terrible. You got to cut the cord, ma'am. Cut yeah. the cord. She fires back to me. She says she remembers, quote unquote, Tim Tuttle saying on the air that Tim Tuttle used to have notes for his phone conversations with girls when he was a teenager. Yeah, but that's still Tim Tuttle being Tim Tuttle. I, yeah, I, I, I wrote my own material. Yeah. And he was the one that was going to sink or swim with his own material. He didn't have anybody else do it for him. Exactly. I don't it's that's terrible. I, I mean, it was awful. I mean, I, plus I fight and I just to finish it with her, I, I fired back off to her. I was like, I don't know what's more scary about you. The fact that you text your daughter's boyfriends and dates for her, or you remember something that I said <laughs> verbatim back in 2012 or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Whew. But yeah, yeah, didn't you, did you do that when you talked to girls on the phone? Uh, Tim, I never talked to girls on the phone. Oh, you never called girls? Oh, no, 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 no. I remember doing it one time, and I, God, I I swear I was set up. There was this girl that I really, really liked, okay? Her name was Janelle Barra. Her dad, the, the, the family, is well-known in St. Louis because he's one of the largest contractors in the city, okay? And every six, the 16th birthday of both girls, they each got brand-new Corvettes, Okay. Their house overlooked the Mississippi River. It was just absolutely stunning. 
And I, she, both Janelle and Janine were super pretty. And so I wanted to talk to Janelle. I couldn't talk to her at school, but my good buddy, Steve Cook could. And so I, I, I called Cookie and I'm like, hey, Cookie, can you call Janelle and ask her if it's okay if I call her? He's like, yeah, sure. Uh, 15 seconds later, Cook's on the phone with me going, yeah, dude, she said she's totally open to talk to you. So he gives me the number. I call her. No, he didn't call her. I guarantee he didn't call her because she's like, uh, th this is, I'm like, yeah, Kevin Klein. Oh, yeah, you're the baseball player. Yeah. Okay. Good talking to you. <laughs> Hit those balls well. <laughs> exactly. Go team. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> That's so funny. Kev, that is weird, though, that that her father bought her and her sister Corvette. There, there's no better way to say, I don't give a fuck about your kid than to give them a Corvette when they're 16 years old. Yeah. That's stupid. Why? Because, man, that's way too much vehicle. You're basically saying, I hope you die. Oh, shit. No, no that was his favorite car. I think he had 27 of them so in his what, garage. what, man? So what, man? That's dangerous. Yeah. You don't give a... Yeah, I, I remember when Jonas, you know, he's like, because I bought him his first car. I bought Audrey his, for her first car and Jonas his first car. And he's like showing me all these muscle cars that he wants. Dodge Challenger. I'm like, I can't buy a 16-year-old that. You're my son. I love you. You'll wrap that around the tree, man. Go through the windshield. Then I'm the guy that bought you something that put you through the windshield. Yeah. Yeah. And he ended up actually having a wreck. I was you know, going to say. Two years later. I was going to say. Yeah. No. Hey. No, you don't get your kid a high-powered vehicle. Well, my thought about it was, okay, they're, they're 16 and they're getting the Corvette of that year that they turned 16. Where did they go from there? You know, hey, true. Do you got to buy him a Lamborghini when they turn 21? I mean, they got the cake to do it, but still. I just, Kevin, yeah, to me, the big issue, though, is just too much car. Yeah. I mean, giving somebody with no driving experience whatsoever a Corvette is the same thing as you're at the Indy 500. Mm -hmm. You're on turn one, sitting in your seats, having a great time. Suddenly, um, you know, one of the drivers, let's call it Joseph Newgarden, <laughs> stops his vehicle just stops it right there and comes over to you and says hey uh sir you the big nose and you're like me you're like he's like yeah do you have a driver's license yeah i do i want you to finish the race come here <laughs> get in the car finish the race for me that's exactly what that is you're yeah, gonna put that thing into a fucking wall and gordon smiley that shit oh uh, next turn probably <laughs> <laughs> there won't be that turn. It's just me. I went straight in. Yeah. Yeah, for but, sure. But, but knowing Klein, it wouldn't be at 235 miles an hour. It'd be like 30. It'd be 2.3 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, sorry. I scratched your car going into the wall. <laughs> yep. yep. A am I right, though, man? I mean, uh, you know. <clears throat> Uh, um, she kind of was a little scary. That's a little scary to me, man. Yeah, but that that's the thing you get, I think, with enablers. They're the last one to see it. And exactly. then when somebody points it out to them, they get very, very defensive. Exactly. Yeah. They can't, you can't take it back. You know, what, what's done is done. Right. But I, I Kev, I, I remember that. And, you know, we talked about it in the air. It's just so funny to me. I would have notes. I'd have, like... Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, most of the time, just bullet points of subjects I wanted to talk to a girl about, uh -huh. but you know, sometimes I would, you know, have like the pros, you know, the narrative <laughs> and I, a couple of things, I, one, one, I remember, uh, just completely running out of stuff. And I think it was Kathy Odell. Boy, she was hot. I mean, she was, she was the girl who got the body first. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I, I do know what you're saying. You know, you know that that first girl in eighth grade who she doesn't look like she did in seventh grade. She ain't like the rest of them. One yeah. of these things ain't like the other. One of and she had a crush on me. She liked me. Really? Yeah. And I, 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 you know, she said, "Hey, call me." Gave me the number and stuff like that. And I was so nervous. I was, I was shaking. I was literally shaking. It was like, I think it was my first call that I ever called a girl is eighth grade. And. uh we, we we get towards the end of it and I'm out of material. I'm done. I got nothing left on the piece of paper, Kev. And she's like, oh, I, 
I like talking to you. Let, you know, she can hear that I'm, I'm trying to wrap it up. Uh huh. And she's like, well, let's talk some more. I'm like, oh my God, no, I don't have anything. <laughs> I, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, the only reason that you kind of like me now is because that shit was completely prepared. Yeah. And, and, and it, was just, it was so awkward after that. And, and finally, I just told her, I said, I really don't have anything more to talk to you about. I, let me think of some stuff. And if I can think of some stuff tonight, I'll call you back. Nice. And did you think of some things? Yes. Of course you did. And her, her dad answered the phone. So I hung up. Great. But we talked the next day. She was my first kiss. Really? My first French kiss. Wow. C Kathy O'Dell. I had to ask a classmate how to do that. <laughs> yeah, that didn't get around the school. Wait, but you're from Missouri. Didn't you have your sister? Oh! <laughs> Shots fired. Seven years younger than me. <laughs> uh, see, you thought about it. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking about it now. I'm like, what the? No, I couldn't have done that. <laughs> no, you were quick with that, man. You thought about it. Yeah, I know. The girl that was interested in me, Debbie Landreth, uh, guys were asking me if I kissed her, and I'm like, mm, no. They were like, you didn't make out with her? I'm like, no. I'm like, I don't even know how. So there was this girl, and she was in, I was in seventh grade, and Sharon Morgan was in eighth grade. We had a class together, and the word on the street was that Sharon Morgan kind of got around. And so I asked her, I'm like, hey, um, I'm not asking you to show me. I'm just asking you to kind of like to tell me, how do you make out with somebody? She's like, you've never made out with anybody? I'm like, no. Dude, the very next day, that was all over school. <laughs> oh, man. How, what, yeah. what year? What year? I was in seventh grade. So, what, 84, 85? No, I'm sorry. Uh, 81, 82. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, hey Kev, I just remembered something in regards to my notes. Uh -huh. What Something my sister did. She saw my notes and uh, she wrote something in there and she, damn her. She had the same writing as me. <laughs> like, like, like sandwiched in there. It was, uh, and, I, and I remember talking to Kathy O'Dell and, 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 yeah, um, you know, we had basketball practice, you know, and I talked to her right after basketball practice, eighth grade. And, you know, by eighth grade, we all have to shower and everything like that. After oh, practice. Yeah. And, <laughs> This is what I almost said to Kathy O'Dell because my sister wrote it on my notes. Um, I was in the shower today and something really weird. And I stopped because I just realized I didn't write that. Uh-huh. Tina had uh, wrote. Thanks, Tina. I was in the shower today and I saw my teammates naked and I got a boner. She wrote that shit in there. Yeah. Would not have gone over well, buddy. And I stopped and there was just dead silence. And, and Kathy O'Dell's on the other side going, what happened in the shower? Uh -huh. <laughs> and Kev, I'm, I'm serious. It was, it was the longest, craziest pause. And I actually did the phone away. Yeah, Tim, Tim, come here. I you know, imitated my mom calling me. Nice. And, and I said, oh, oh, hold on. Hold, Kathy, hold on. My mom's calling me. I got to go up. Just hold on one second. You know, you put the phone down. Yeah. And then I just like started like pretending I was talking to my mom, walking up and saying, okay, mom, coming around, you know, and I was trying to think of what to do with the shower thing. Yeah. And, and I couldn't think of anything. And I was praying that by the time I got back to the phone, she forgot about the shower thing. And did she? No. No. Like a dog with a bone. No. I, and I just told her, I just, I panicked. I just said, I forgot what I was going to say. I'm sorry. I forgot what I was going to say. Well, yeah, there and you I, go. And I moved on to the next bullet point. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I can't believe Tina, Tina was awful to me, man. For a long time. Oh yeah. She used to, I mean, she was brutal. First off when she get, you know, she was much bigger than I was. She was a shot putter. Uh-huh. So for a long time, she was much bigger than I was. I mean, she just, she kicked my ass. Yeah. I, re I remember uh, at the at the catamaran uh, tour that we took uh, just off of Key West on your wedding night, and all of the Tuttles are there, and all of your bride's family is there, and some sort of an argument happened between you and Tina, and <laughs> you looked straight at her and said, yeah, well, your politics are what killed dad. <laughs> Holy shit. Do you remember that? 
Not really. We were, I was pretty drunk. Yeah. Yeah, you were. <laughs> but yep, that happened. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kev, <laughs> Kev, all of that is a residual of the the uh, physical and mental torture uh-huh. my older sister put uh, on me. I mean, you know, and it starts off with we had back to back birthdays. Okay. Hers is the day before mine. And what she wanted for every birthday was, I don't want a gift. My gift that you can give me is to make sure Timmy doesn't get anything tomorrow for his birthday. Oh, God. <laughs> is that fucked up or what? Yeah, that is. That is. Yeah. But you guys but, are you guys are good now, right? Oh, no. Tina's good. Tina and I are great now. Yeah. We're, we're fine. Yeah. It, uh, it age mellows, you know? Yeah. Age mellows. And, you know, she, she, she's done... Um, She's done some uh, work recently on, on you know, checking our um, ancestry and, you know, the, on the Tuttle side, we're so, there's, it goes, I mean, I'm 14th generation American. You know, we go back to the beginning. We go back to the Mayflower. Yeah. Yeah. And some of the uh, connections are insane and remarkable. Well, the um, Aaron Burr. Yeah. Aaron Burr. That's a big name yeah. in American history. Aaron Burr, as she found out, were descendant, descendants of. Yeah. So, and that put me, you know, also puts me on the same path as Bill Burr. Him and That's I, right. are distant cousins. <laughs> but it still doesn't excuse uh, what she did to me in 1979 when I was a really young kid. Do I know this? Uh, do you know the Thurman Munson story? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, go ahead and share it though, because there's a lot of people that don't. Okay. 1979. Thurman Munson, catcher for the New York Yankees. Probably the best catcher in, in Major League Baseball at the time. Yes, he was. He was all-star and just, he was the guy. And we had great seats right behind home plate. And there's a pop-up. I think it was uh, Sixto Lascano huh? had a pop-up. And Thurman pulls his mask off, comes right over here right by me at where home plate is, catches the foul ball. And I say, I yell out at the top of my, you know, prepubescent lungs, you stink, Thurman Munson. And he looked at me because I was so close to him. And, you know, it stuck out because the, the crowd was silent. Mm-hmm. And he, look, he looks at me and gives me like a, a weird stare and then just puts his mask on and goes about his business. Two weeks later, Thurman Munson killed in his plane crash. Do you remember that, Kev? Totally remember that. He was a pilot, and I think it was in Ohio or something like that, killed in his own plane in a plane crash. Yeah. And I remember my sister, because, you, know, you, you know, we were telling the story at the house. She wasn't at the game, but, she, you know, she heard the story about Thurman Munson give me, giving me the glare after I said he stinks. She goes, she, you know, she pulls me to the side and goes, Timmy, you know what this means, right? And I was like, yeah, I uh, I didn't, I, I didn't want him to die. I like, you know, I don't like the Yankees. I hate the Yankees and, you know, but I didn't want him to die. She goes, Oh, it's much worse than that. (laughs) I was like, I was like, what are you talking about? She goes, Oh, you didn't know when somebody dies, their spirit floats throughout the world for three days. They get three days to haunt and bring vengeance upon anybody that has chumped them or dissed them or, you know, uh, done them wrong. And I was like, what? And she goes, yeah. And she goes, well, you know, since he's Thurman Munson, he's a beloved ball player. There's probably not too many people that he would float around and mess with. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So what, what are we doing? She goes, but he probably remembers just two weeks ago, that little boy in Milwaukee who said he stinks. <laughs> Gav, I slept under my bed for three nights. Oh, yeah. I slept under my bed. I remember I put uh, fake pillows in so Thurman Munson Ghost would maybe think that it's me and just do his uh, stuff and then get out of there. But I was under the bed, man. I was so like, whoa, dude, this is, yeah. Tina, diabolical. Is that, I mean, who thinks of that shit? That's creative for one. But yeah, man. <laughs> I who can just thinks see of it. that shit? 
I could just see you looking over your shoulder all over the place. Oh, it was terrible, Kev. I, I didn't want nighttime to come for three nights. Yeah. And then you're marketing off the calendar. I got to just survive one more night. One, yeah, more, one night. more night. One more night. One more night. <laughs> I'm surprised she didn't do something to fuck with me at, at night. I'm, that that's what I'm surprised. Very surprising, yeah. But knowing Tina, she just forgot she said it, got a good laugh, and walked away because she saw that she scared me. Yeah. She and didn't just, know how bad she scared you. Oh, yeah. She had no idea I slept under my bed for three nights. We were uh, we were predicating this whole conversation on uh, the conversation you had with, uh, with Connie. Uh, Connie. Um, I also got a DM. Uh, in our Buzz uh, Sprout feed, it was a fan mail about uh, kids taking their parents to to their job interviews. This person, and they didn't leave a name. It was just a text message from a phone number. Uh, they worked in the oil and gas industry in Houston for 30 years. They said, as oil and gas is one to do, there's a lot of layoffs from time to time. She said, had to lay off a 20-something-year-old person who, in the middle of the laying off, called their mom and said, mom, I'm getting laid off. Can you talk to the employer for me and save my job? To which she hands over the phone to the employer who is releasing her. And the mom starts pleading a case. The employer hung up. <laughs> oh my God. That's unbelievable, man. Isn't it? That's unbelievable. I mean, that, that, that right there is the biggest red flag. You got to fight your own battles. Totally. Now, I, you would have had, you, you may have had, I mean, who knows? You may not have had any shot at all, but you have a much better shot if you plead the case yourself. Yeah. You don't yeah. have your mom do it. That's an automatic. Well, now I know I've made the right decision. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, and then the mom actually taking, you know, the, okay, I'll talk to him. Why? You're not going to accomplish anything. You're, just hurting, your, you're hurting your kid. Exactly. I know. I know. But you know, a lot of, sometimes Kev, that's, um, that that's an innate parental thing. Like when, when, when my kids get chumped or mm -hmm. get slighted, what I I'm just like, Hey, what's the email? Yeah. What's their email? Let me know. And they're like, dad, dad, you know, so they've had to call me off of it sometimes. No, I get it. Uh, I spoke with uh, a guy named uh, Evan Jarshower, who is uh, an interventionist. And I said, you know, uh, we're talking about enablers. And he says, don't call them enablers. He says, they're doing it from position of love. He said, that's the only way they know how to show support to their addicted son or daughter. They know they're doing wrong, but it's their way of trying to help through love. Yeah. And let me give you a psychological component to it also, Kev, uh -huh. is when your kids reach adulthood, they really don't need you anymore as much. So it's neat to feel needed again. It's like, okay, they need me still. Yeah, I can understand that. And you, so you can continue that little buzz that, uh, that you get, that little high you get from helping your kid out. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I totally understand that. I can totally see that. So like when Audrey or Jonas will come to you for uh, career advice or relationship advice, that you feel important again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, because you know, they they go from they literally can't survive one day without you to I don't need, I haven't I haven't talked to dad in 4 or 5 days. You know what I'm saying? I uh, totally do. Yeah. And it, as a parent, you're just like, "Oh." <laughs> and then you see on your social media feed, you know, 6-year-old Jonas and blah 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 and you're like, "Oh." The next day he's 21-year-old Jonas and he's giving presentations out in San Francisco to Silicon Valley. They grow up fast, don't they? I know, man. That was quick, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, that, dude. that's got to freak you out, you know, because I get to see the more play by play, but that's got to freak you out, too, because you remember them both when they're just babies. Oh, it, uh, yeah. I wonder where the time goes. Honest to God, I wonder where the time goes. Yeah. I mean, that, like you see a post of uh, of, of Jonas, uh, you know, doing that uh, Silicon Valley or, you know, Audrey's doing an ESPN color analyzation for a volleyball match or something like that. You got to be like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's that Kenny Chesney song. Don't blink. Exactly. It is. It, it, if you're not familiar with the Kenny Chesney song, don't blink. Listen to it. It's one thousand percent true. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Kev, I, I got to tell you, you know, I'm hesitant to go here. Oh, I don't, we don't have to I, if you don't want to. I, I, I'm, are I'm, you are, are you okay? 
Oh, right now, yeah. Uh, okay. I've been, I've been kind of looking forward to this. Um, but okay. Yeah, right. I, I'm. I'm gonna after this. I'm gonna put uh, a, a memorial together uh, for my dog that we had to put down this past weekend. Yeah, the mayor. A lot of you remember the mayor uh, Pinto, his Pomeranian, and the video. The, the mayor of Sconeyville was a hilarious video series. This is Channel's Television's breaking news. Is there a new green initiative in Sconeyville? During his lunch break today, the mayor of Sconeyville was excited to get some fresh air and check out the newly landscaped grounds of City Hall. Here you can see the mayor surveying the new mulch and lush greenery. However, things took an unexpected and unprecedented turn while inspecting the precise edging of the thick green verdure. Noticing a spot that looked undernourished, the typically demanding mayor decided to water it himself instead of ordering the grounds crew to redo it. Is the mayor turning over a new leaf? When news of the mayor of Sconeyville happens, we'll bring it to you first at Breaking News. We now take you back to your original program. A lot of people loved it. So, uh, you know, unexpected uh, tragedy in the Klein household this past weekend. Um, and Kev, you know, I'm here for you anytime you need me, buddy. I know. Thank you so much, man. I, so I, so j just call me and I'll hand the phone to a neighbor. <laughs> I'll get Connie on the phone and she can help you. <laughs> yeah, Con since Connie knows it all. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She she loves the podcast, Kev. She listens to. I mean, immediately as soon as we uh, every Wednesday, it's it's like a new episode. Connie downloads it, and you know, always messages me some stuff. So you know, she's she's one of our our peeps. So I'm just playing with her. She knows that though. Connie, look the, to sum up what we do. We're jerks, but we're jerks with a heart. Okay, we're we're, we're your jerks. <laughs> we are your jerks, Connie. That's so funny. Uh, hey, Kev, yeah. <clears throat> I, I got called out this morning. Somebody uh, actually messaged me and said, hey, you know, I noticed that you pay a lot of reverence to your father on his birthday and uh, on Father's Day, which I do. You know, I always try to get a post or a story up there about my dad. Uh -huh. And, she, and, he, and <clears throat> they said, well, I don't, I don't see the same kind of thing for your mom on Mother's Day or her birthday. Okay. So they're like calling me out. I, you know, I, I, I let me just say this. Okay. I, I had uh, a, a good upbringing with my dad. My mom and I, we kind of butt heads. I mean, it was just like that, you know? Right. Now we're actually cool now. I've had, I, I have great co phone conversations uh, with her. As a matter of fact, I'll have another one this week. She's uh, turning 88 Jeez. on Sunday. 88 years old, Dottie Tuttle. Wow. Uh, but she's at, we're actually cool now. Everything's cool. I mean, I guess she lost a little bit of her ferociousness <laughs> as you start moving up in your 80s. Yeah. So, I mean, we're cool. And <clears throat> let me just say this too is, and most people don't know this. Um, obviously, my siblings will know it. And the people who remember from when I was a kid, I was actually a mama's boy growing up. I, I, you know, clear mama's boy. You know, I, I, I would get sad, you know, she's late picking me up and everything like that. Uh, so, you know, I was, and, and anybody will tell you that. Uh, yeah. Timmy's a mama's boy until I realized my mama didn't love me. <laughs> yeah. I got friend zoned by my mom. Wow. See that uh, I I would have thought that be, you were a mama's boy because there was not the affection that you were getting you weren't getting the affection from her that you were from your dad and so you're trying to prove yourself to her and that's why you re, were were a mama's boy but maybe not that not maybe not the case no I mean I I have to admit I was a tough child I I was a smart ass was I mean uh, yeah well yeah I was I was I was lip I was the king of the lip and you know my mom just. It was, it was too much for her. Yeah. You know, whereas my dad would laugh, you know, cause he's, he saw comedy, right? My mom took it all personal <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I, so I, you know, I'm a mama's boy and I, and I realized I, I was, uh, not, no longer a mama's boy or I shouldn't be a mama's boy. I, I remember, uh, in high school, 
the track and field coach uh, approached me, uh, you know, one time at school and said, Tim, uh, you're, you're, you're becoming so athletic now. I, you know, I see you jumping in basketball. I see your speed and everything like that. You know, I, I think you should do track and field. And I was, I was like, oh, that's, that's an honor. You know, I don't know where I'd have the time because I was a three sport athlete at the time, but I guess a lot of people can, you know, wedge in track and field during uh -huh. baseball season. Okay. So I went home to mom and I said, I told her and I was, I was, you know, I was like, she's going to love this, you know, Timmy's an athlete and everything like that. And I was like, you know, mom, the track and field coach wants me to, what do you, do you, what uh, event what event do you think I should do, Mom? And she said, "Javelin catcher," <laughs> like immediately. <laughs> and at that point, I thought, "Okay, <laughs> this uh, this woman ain't as down with me as I thought she was." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Aren't too many javelin catchers out there. <laughs> I, I was like, no, nah. I was like, mom, mom, you mean javelin thrower, you know, cause I had a pipe, I had a pipe uh -huh. and, I, and I could, you know, cause I won the football toss and, you know, field day and, and, and all that stuff. And she goes, no, I mean, you know, the, the, a lot of people are doing that already. Somebody has got to be down there to return the javelins. <laughs> yeah. That's the same <laughs> laugh. That's the same laugh Tina had. I bet. <laughs> do it, Tim, do it. <laughs> You should do it. <laughs> hey, hey, Kev, I um um I think it was Thursday. I'm on a I'm on a date with a lovely lady. And um we're at Sugarland Town Center, a restaurant there. Okay. Love that place. Yeah, beautiful place. But I, we were sitting next to a, a table with uh you know a couple young kids. Um, couple young boys. One of them looked about it'd be about five years old. The other one's about eight years old or so. Okay. And a group of Muslim women walk by the window. Uh, and the little one says to his his older brother, says, Are those ninjas? <laughs> <laughs> Which is the exact chuckle that people around, you know, right. He, he said it loud. Uh, the older brother said, no, they're probably just ugly. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and Kevin, all honesty, I thought it was just kids being kids until I looked over on the kids menu scribble with crayon on the older one. He's he's uh, drawing Muhammad on his little menu there. <laughs> they're I'm advanced in Sugarland. I'm just kidding. He didn't do that. <laughs> but 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 the first part was right. I was just Kev, it was so it was like a comedy act. You know, the timing that they had and everything, everybody around was cracking up. It was just funny. What were thought, they were the parents did the what were the parents saying? The parents, the hey, Kev, the, the, the two kids were way off on the end of the table. Uh-huh. And the two the, the the two parents were talking to two other parents who had stopped by, you know, to, to say hi. So they wow. didn't know. I mean, that was cool. And, and I, I, I almost like interjected too, like to, to let them know how hilarious that was, hilarious that was. I'm like, Hey man, you were busy, but your kids just did a comedy act. It was hilarious, <laughs> but I decided not to, you know, yeah. the moment, the moment had passed. That is funny though. They're yeah. Ninjas. Are they ninjas? <laughs> no, they're just ugly. <laughs> Uh, kids, they don't mean anything. But, you know, if you think about it in today's hypersensitive world, you know, that could get a, a place bombed or something, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, th th they would, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, they're five and eight years old, but wow, the repercussions of that. Yeah, oh. it was it, it was like the time, I, Kev, I, I, um, I, when I drive uh, Dallas and Timmy home, we always do a trivia contest. And, you know, I'm asking them trivia questions. It's mm -hmm. kind of cute. It's kind of cute setup. It's like, Okay, you have to get it right. If you don't, you put it on your brother and he has to get it right. And if you miss two in a row between you, uh, you have to get out and walk the rest of the way home. <laughs> Which of course I'll never do, but they, oh, they get a they get a kick out of it because then they'll pressure's on. Yeah. And uh and I I, I asked Timmy, I said, uh, Timmy, you know, because I'm just thinking of questions popping in my head. I'm like, what is the mascot? of the Atlanta major league baseball team. And he goes, Hmm, 
I think I know this. Can, can you can you give me a hint? And <laughs> I, I thought about it. I was like, um, it rhymes with graves. Rhymes with graves because we just passed the cemetery, so it just popped out. Okay. He goes, Atlanta slaves. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And suddenly Dallas, you know, Dallas is a teenager now. Uh-huh. He is just rolling. <laughs> just, I mean, he is, I it, it, you it, it's hard to make Dallas really laugh out loud. Yeah. But he just thought that was the funniest shit. So what does little brother do? You know, when 13-year-old brother uh, is laughing, he keeps saying it. Of course. I, I had to have the talk with him. Did you? I was like, son, this is what we call Tuttle talk. Okay. This is what we, we, we sometimes have conversations among us, goofing around, having fun or everything like that. That cannot go out the door. It's just between us. This is one of those situations. You can't be running around thinking it's funny saying Atlanta slaves. No, but he, you know, just, he doesn't know. Of course he doesn't. He just says something innocently. First thing that pops into the head that rhymes with rhyme, graves, and his brother laughs, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, that this is this is great." You yeah. know? Yep. Now he's got his tight five. He'll be up at the improv. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's going to hear about the uh, the uh, the ninja and ugly. He's going to put. He's going to work that in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then I totally have an act now. It's really awesome. <laughs> it, it, it's only one minute and 20 seconds but it kills yeah <laughs> that's funny oh, yeah all right kev are you ready let's do a top three shall we just when you thought they couldn't count any higher it's Tuttle and Klein's top three kev top three things most people love but you find overrated first thing that popped into my mind was burger king burger king yeah, I just think it's you don't bland. like the char. You don't like the char broiled. No, nah, I just think it's bland. It's just bland food. Yeah, I, Kev, I used to. Um, you know, I don't eat fast food anymore. Really, I just right. don't. But I, I actually like Burger King, the char broiled and this chicken sandwich. But you know, that's like, that's like decades ago, right? You know? Yeah. But yeah. You, you do do you actually think most people like it? I mean, there's always lines. At the at the local Burger King that we got here, and oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So, so so it's a Missouri thing. It could very well be. I mean, but there the the competition is right next door at McDonald's. Then across the street, you got Freddy's hamburgers, and then you got Whataburger. So yeah, <laughs> they're they are fighting an uphill battle. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, uh, it may be a Missouri thing. Is Kev, you pass by a Burger King in Houston, and you would swear it's just a money money laundering operation. Right. Yeah, because it, it's all Whataburger there. <laughs> exactly it's like yeah. there is nothing going on there the mob is using that or some uh, like like cartel is using that to launder money uh the second thing might surprise you here timmy t knowing that i played uh for 22 years but baseball you think baseball is overrated i do it's such a boring game i know they're trying to speed it up and everything but it's just a boring game yeah but it, you know it, it's an event though it's an event is you it? know, it, it, it's an experience. Uh, yeah, it's boring as shit. If 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 it's a World Series game, I there's there's atmosphere that takes away from the downtime. But a regular season game, ah, yeah, yeah. And that's true too because you know when I watch Game Six, Astros when we clinched the World Championship in 2022, mm -hmm. I was there. I mean, and it was ridiculously overpriced tickets, but it was worth every single penny. Yeah. Yeah. I, my wife, we, we went to uh, the championship series and we went to a World Series game. That was the first baseball game she'd ever been to. She loved it. Thought it was the greatest. Yeah. 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 There's just something about that, you know, because that's that when you're talking about a World Series, particularly clinching, I mean, that's lore that goes down in history. I, I will never forget the noise when Alvarez busted that home run. I'll yeah. never forget. It. I've never, I have never heard that noise in my life. It's amazing. Of just such a, a, a drown out, everybody in the stadium just screaming at the top of their lungs at the same time, you know, just drowning everything out. Your eardrums, 
or or, or, or pushing the limits and you don't care because it's the coolest thing ever. And you could feel the electricity and people like you would never expect standing next to each other in the stands to be like buds or whatever, hugging each other, you know? Yeah. You got you got a, you got the rabbi and the sheik hugging each other over there. <laughs> Astros, Astros, <laughs> yeah, totally cool. I'll hit you tomorrow, but today, no problem. We are one. We are one. We are one. Yes, Alvarez, Alvarez. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's just it's just uh, it's something that I, I I'll never ever forget. Yeah. No. It, that that if there's an atmosphere, the game is tolerable. But no, regular season game, eh, nah, I, I, it, it's completely overrated. And then uh, I think the other thing uh, that is uh, that uh, a lot of people like that's completely overrated. I am going to say, and it's only because you got me watching The Office, Steve Carell. You don't like Steve Carell? Nah. Now, hold on. Let's back up a little bit because I told you that, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was in the rabbit hole of watching The Office. Yeah, yeah. We're on season two, episode 17 now. You, and you don't like it? I love the show. Don't like him. I've, yeah. I've never I've never liked him. Not Man. in anything he's ever done. Really? I don't know what it is. Okay. I don't know uh, what it is. Man, he... Kev, for, for somebody to play a role where it is so cringy, uh -huh. And so uncomfortable. I mean, that's what he did with this role as Michael Scott. Right. Come on. <laughs> come on. Michael, Ma come on. You oh. don't have to worry. I'm not there. I'm, not, you I'm not worried. To HR you know what? The only thing I am worried about is getting a boner. Yeah, I mean, I there, there are times where I didn't I I I didn't want to watch because I was like, oh my God, he's actually saying this <laughs> in a meeting or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I know what you're saying exactly. And I think one of the reasons why, and, and this will probably put it into perspective for you, is because the character that I adore on that show is is John Krasinski, Halpert, Jim Halpert. Yeah, Jim, you like Jim. Everybody likes Jim. Yeah, because everything is so positive with Jim. He, if I had Jim's attitude when I was in high school, I probably could have had a lot of girlfriends because he's self-deprecating. He's so calm under pressure. He's so funny. And I, I just, and he's the complete opposite of Michael Scott. So, but I haven't even liked Michael Scott. I haven't liked him in, uh, in uh, Little Miss Sunshine. I didn't like him in uh, Despicable Me. I've just never been a fan. I, wow. I don't know. Okay. I, I, what I am glad to read though, is that everybody on that show loved him, adored him, made him cry on the last episode uh, that they got some impromptu thing going. I mean, I love to read that kind of stuff. I just personally find him overrated. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, that, the, the, that show would never have been that show without him though. Very true. You, you needed that character. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. I, and Kev, you know, I'm surprised you don't like Dwight Schrute. That is just hilarious. <laughs> I do. I like him. Yeah. 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 And, and but, but to me, like the sleeper one, the guy that may, he's, he's hardly ever on, but when he is, it's always a bang. Uh, Creed is awesome. You know, that's his real name in, in real life. Yeah. You know, he was in a band in the sixties, man. He was a rocker. <laughs> really? Yeah. He was big time. <laughs> that's his real name. Creed Bratton. Look it up. I mean, yeah. he was, he was a big time guy, you know, in, in the sixties and, you know, big time with the free love and everything like that. I mean, he would just, yeah. Nice. He would go down into the, into the crowd, three, four women at once right wow. there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Creed. Creed. Creed, but he's just hilarious. Like I, what he'll do with just a morsel part. Yeah. You know, I, well, I like you, Creed when he was going to get fired and he talked him out of firing him and firing Devin. Let's fight this. <laughs> make, make the call. Let's make the call. Let's call her. <laughs> you should fire Devin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was good. I'm glad you like the show, man. That's a, it's a really good show. It's a good, I mean, I know you're a fan of the mockumentaries. Oh, I love that aspect. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's, uh, that, that, that's a great show. All right. Trisha, Trisha's favorite is, is Rain Wilson. Trisha's favorite is, is Dwight. Dwight. Yeah. That, boy, you, you can't, I mean, that, that guy right there just nails that part. Yes, he does. I think Rain, I, everybody that they have in there is perfect for their role, yeah. you know? Did you yeah. ever watch? Did you watch any of the bloopers? Oh yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you see what I'm talking? It's so surprising to see you know 
Jim and Dwight, uh, Kaczynski and, and Rain Wilson. They are, they love their buds. Yeah, they are. They're just like best buds. But you know, on that show, it's like, and you know, here's the funny thing too, is that, uh, my first experience with BJ Novak was when he was Udovich in, in glorious bastards. Yes. So to see him in a comedy, just, it surprised the hell out of me. But he's one of the story editors. I mean, he's one of like the writers of it. Dude, he writes him and Mindy Kaling, him and uh and Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. They 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 wrote most of that. They're best friends in, in real life. They should be. Yeah. They the, yeah. those two at a very young age got together and created a pop culture phenomenon. But it's based on Ricky Gervais in yes. in England, right? Yes. Have you ever watched any of that? Not as good. But okay. I, some some English hu humor is just a little too dry. Got it. Yeah. Like 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 fifty percent of the Monty Python stuff I love. Uh -huh. The other fifty is like I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, not for me. I get it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, understood. And, and I'm actually have British ancestry, so it should be in in there in the DNA. So, but I I just can't I just can't you know pull it out of there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so there's right. my three. There's my three. Uh, Kev, these are, uh, things most people love, but you find overrated I, soccer. Oh, really? Don't get me wrong. I, I actually really tune in during the world cup because of the event. Uh -huh. I, I really get into that, but man, you got to do something to spice that up. I, I'm the same boat that you are with baseball. Okay. I mean, there's just got to be something, man. I mean, you know, a nil-nil tie to me is inexcusable. They call soccer the beautiful game. Um, if if I put it into this kind of perspective, does it intrigue you in the slightest? Um, I always use soccer as a metaphor for life. You know, soccer, you can go forward when something stalls. You go back and regroup. Same thing in life. It's also a, a uh, an analogy of war. You are trying to take the other person's part of the field and score a goal. Uh, so if you're looking for offense and defense, it's, it's clash of the Titans. Yeah. Kev, I can get that exact same phenomenon with regular fucking football <laughs> with good scoring and shit and nice hits. Yeah. Oh, uh, the other thing too, is I, I, I don't care if there's no goals scored. If there's a great save, I would rather see a great save than a great goal. Really? Oh God, yeah. If I was a goalie. Don't get me wrong. I, I like you know I I watch you know like Pele highlights, uh huh, and Messi and and you know all the big you know their highlights are, are phenomenal. What they can do with a ball is ridiculous. Now here's something that might surprise you. I would much prefer to watch the women's game than the men's game, and I'll tell you why. The women don't flop. They don't fall. They don't try. Oh, and, I, oh I fucking hate that and yeah. i've talked to i've talked to pro soccer players and they too hate that aspect of the game kev i i hate flopping i hate that yeah. and it's made its way into basketball too oh yes it has and and you know i i can't and i'll i'll be honest with you i cannot stand lebron james i just i can't stand him and a lot of people are like well it's because is, is, is it because the politics tim he's too outspoken i don't give a shit about any of that i mean freedom of speech say what you want I can't stand his fucking flopping. Mm -hmm. There is no way that little brush moved a six foot nine inch, 270 pound muscle bound man like that. Stop being a pussy, LeBron. I hate yeah. that. I, oh, hate I, I that. can't, I can't stand it. That's the Dude, only aspect jo of the men's game. I hate Jordan. Never did that. Jordan. Never. Ne he took the hit. Yeah. And never. boy, they hit him. They did, man. I mean, the, the, the Detroit Pistons in the early nineties were trying to fucking kill him. Yeah. yeah, like trying to to paralyze him when he went in. Yep, and he's just like, all right, and then he works out in the off season. He comes back the next. Remember, he came back that next year. Oh, dude, yeah, the year he, they won the first one, the champion, their first championship, 1990, 91. Uh huh. Because he just got his ass kicked in 89, 90 by the Detroit Pistons. They just beat him up. They beat the shit out of him, yeah. and he just said, uh -uh. you know, he. I mean, he went on the program and he looked different. He, oh, he looked different. Played different. I mean, he was so strong and quicker, yeah. if you can believe it. God, I hated Bill Lambeer. I hated him. Yeah. He was just dirty. Yeah. What what they call them? The the bad boys. Of bad boys. The yeah. bad boys. Yeah. I, I could not stand because, you know, I'm a Jordan fan. I, I cheered for the Bulls. 
Right. But yeah, I Kev, soccer is, is something I think it's overrated. I know every, most people love it. Uh -huh. um, sushi. Ooh. Okay. Most people love sushi. I I think it's overrated. I mean, I'll eat it. Uh huh. I, I didn't start eating it until uh, you know my last ex, you know, Taryn got me into it. Okay. And uh, you know, and I can eat it. It's okay. But man, it is overrated. It's it, it's 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 all right. But it's not. Hey, let's be so addicted to sushi that we literally fish the oceans to nothing. You know, did you have a favorite piece? Um, California roll. Did you like the Maguro, which is uh, the the high quality tuna? Did you like the she, salmon? She always ordered for me. Okay. <laughs> she okay. did all the ordering and yeah. I would just eat it. I would dip it in the, the wasabi and teriyaki sauce or whatever the hell it was. Uh -huh. uh, uh, the, the soy, soy sauce. sauce. Yeah. Yeah. The soy. And I, I'd make a good wasabi soy mix there on the sauce and I would dip it in there. Okay. I, Kev, I wouldn't have any clue. <laughs> Well, I, I, you know, I just saw uh, recently that, you know, our oceans are almost completely fished out because of people's addiction to sushi. Is that right? Yeah. Look it up. Oh, I will. I, you can't, I, you can't I like find sushi. tuna. You can't find tuna anymore. You can't. Oh, my goodness. That's they my think, favorite thing. Yeah. It, it, it's very hard to find. Okay. Well, I'll watch the prices of that skyrocket. Exactly. Uh, Kev, my um, third Top three things people love, but you find overrated. Uh, Dwayne Johnson. The Rock. Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. Why? I mean, I, I like him, but it's just, it's too much. Okay. Overexposure. He needs to say no to some things. And Kev, I, I can't get over. I don't know if you remember this from a few years ago, the Super Bowl, where right before the kickoff, he was doing that on the mic thing. Yes. Do you remember that? I do remember that. I I, I I don't look at him the same anymore because that was so cringy, so awkward, and so weird to me uh -huh. that I, I cannot look at him the same anymore. All right, Faithful, it's about that time. We all know about this storied franchise, the rings, the legends. Uh, uh, Dwayne, you got to say no to some shit, man. <laughs> Like yeah, sure. You're 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 the rock, and you get to be seen right then by a hundred million Americans right before the kickoff of the Super Bowl. But look at what you're doing. Yeah, already a hundred million people already know who you are. You don't yeah, need we, that exposure. We, exactly. We know. I mean, that that was just. I I just think it, it's it's the point where it's just too much. Well, and what what I found weird about that, and you're talking about the pregame hype speech that he gave. Why do you need to hype the Super Bowl? It's the biggest exactly. breaking game of the year. Exactly. That's We're already at it. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that, that, those are mine. Um, my top three, Kev. Let's talk about rabbit holes. Yeah. People love when we, we talk about the rabbit holes they went down. And, and a lot of people, like when we tell them the rabbit hole we were down the last week, they go down the same rabbit holes. Yeah, that's what sucks about this. Because uh, like you said, you went down the office rabbit hole. And so we gave the office a try. And... You know, now we watch four episodes a day. So, you see what I'm talking so about? We, we've now gone down the office rabbit hole. You'll say uh, some other rabbit hole. I'll check it out. Damn it. Two hours have gone by. I'm, I'm so sorry, man. No, but that's what happens with this segment. You know, yeah, it, it, it's something that it, especially if you don't know about it, you go and you get hooked into it. Oh, you get, you get intrigued by it, you know? Yeah. Because the other person's selling it. All right. What was your rabbit hole? Sell me, Kev. What did you have? Is the office? Is the office? No, that was two weeks ago. Um, okay. Yeah, this one is. Uh, I, you don't want to hear about it. It's dog euthanasia. What? Yeah. Why do you do this to yourself? Well, because I, I wanted to. I, I I wanted to find out if if it was compassionate. I wanted to find out when it's right or wrong to make the decision. Um, I wanted to find out if. The dog is on the other side waiting for me to hold him and pick him up and say, I was just kidding. You know, uh, it, it, that kind of stuff. I, I did it more for me and my own me mental state than I did. I mean, I know all about it because the doctor walks us through it and everything. Great doctor we have, by the way. The last two veterinarians uh, that we've had uh, euthanize our dogs uh, have been great. Barbara Wilhouse over at Lexington Animal Hospital in Sugarland, and then uh, Dr. Blackburn here in Springfield. But I just wanted to know if I made the right decision. And, and what did you come up with? Uh, that all signs pointed to that we made the right decision. Quality of life, man. Yeah, quality of life. So, but here's the thing, Tim. 
we went to bed on June 13th. All we were thinking about was tomorrow we get to celebrate the 18th birthday of Snowdrop, the 6.55 million. We wake up and our dog can't walk and he can't eat. And everything was fine the night before? Um, yeah, perfect. Perfect. See, that, ha that happened to me in 2005 with Sammy. I told, I, that's what I mentioned to you in, in my, my text to you like, with Sammy. We just didn't see it coming. The, the, the night before, running around in the backyard, jumping on me, jumping on uh, Audrey. They're playing and everything like that. Next day, out in the yard, lethargic, eating grass, and then just comes inside and right on the end of the bed, on the ma mattress, uh, the master bedroom, gone. It was hard with her, right? Yeah. Yeah. Our guy had a stroke. Yeah. That's and up, just, until uh, yeah. The, up until the 80s, they didn't think dogs had strokes. And then uh, they found out that, yeah, yeah, they do. And so it was irreversible damage. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, Kevin. <clears throat> yeah. Nice and upbeat, Klein. The, the, the problem, see, the problem with Kevin Klein is this. He can't help himself from being completely 100% honest. <laughs> he can't. No, that's true. He can't. Uh, if he was ever involved with some caper and the, the, the cops, like, you know, just wanted to question him. You know, because, you know, they may have saw him on a security camera or something like that. Or, you know, just Kevin would spill the beans on the whole fucking caper right there. Yeah, he I can't do. help himself. I pride myself on uh, on three things. Loyalty, trustworthiness and honesty. Yeah. But, you know, on occasion, and that would have been a great occasion when, you know, I, I come to you with our weekly feature of the rabbit hole. Instead of going there, I mean, you could have easily just lied to me and said, hey, yeah, I was into a cabbage patch kids of the 80s. You know, best selections, beanie babies or something. You could have done some <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, oh, I was in a Wonder Twins marathon. Yeah. Zan and Jaina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wonder Twin Power activate. Form of some and jack I stick who depresses everybody <laughs> when they do the rabbit hole. In the shape of an iceberg. <laughs> I love that shit, man. <laughs> Wonder Twin Powers activate. Kev, yeah, my rabbit hole uh, this past week is, and, and I never really watched them when they came out. Um, I went on a Mission Impossible marathon. Okay, so the old Mission Impossible or the Tom Cruise? No, the Tom Cruise ones. Okay. I, I went on them and I, you know, because I, I watched uh, the last one, Dead Reckoning. And I was like, you know, I've never, the, the, you know, these are pretty good. You know, I, I kind of like them. Yeah, there, was a, there was a time I was really turned off by Tom Cruise. Uh huh. I thought the Scientology thing was a bit much. And then when he jumped up and down on the couch with uh, Oprah declaring his love for Katie Holmes, that was a little wacky. Right. And then I heard that uh, he had uh, approached Jessica Alba to give her the greatest role she ever had. His husband, his wife, I mean, she, <laughs> she, she offered her, she, he offered her the role. Wow. <laughs> there was just all kinds of internet rumors that he was lining up uh, Hollywood starlets before Katie Holmes came along. Mm -hmm. And they, they're saying Katie Holmes was just a hired gun. That's what they're, that, that's what some of the uh, rumors were. Okay. But I was turned off from Tom Cruise. And then, you know, I liked him in uh, the last Top Gun, the Top Gun 2. Yeah. That was a great movie. I loved it. So I started warming back up to Tom Cruise. They've called Mission Impossible the best franchise, which I don't understand how they can do that because I thought that was James Bond. But they have said Mission Impossible with Tom Cruise is the best franchise in Hollywood history. Really? Yes, they have. I, I know they've done uh, like 4.2 billion or something like that over seven films. That's pretty good. It's about 600 million a film. Mm -hmm. I did not know it eclipsed uh, uh, 007. I, I, I don't know the figures. I'm just saying what the critics have called it. Okay. See, I, I have an issue with it after watching about three of them. Oh, what? Um, <clears throat> Mission Impossible. Tom Cruise always wins, though. <laughs> I'm starting to think that some of these missions, maybe even most of them, they're, they're actually possible. <laughs> Mission somewhat impossible. Mission somewhat possible. Mission on paper, eh, <laughs> possible, but we're going to make it possible. <laughs> am i right yeah very true i mean and, and now when you come up with a new you're just fucking lying to the audience it did, hey does he do all his stunts he man he kevin i, I went down that rabbit hole too 
Uh huh. He has done more dangerous stunts, like the lead role, the actual actor, than anybody in history, including McQueen. Steve McQueen used to do his own. Jackie Chan used to do his too. Jackie Chan did his. What Tom Cruise is doing is off the charts. You know, the, 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 uh, the one where, um, you know, he jumps off the bike, helicopter, the one where he's hanging on the cliff in Mission Impossible 2. I mean, that's him. I've got to give him credit for that then. Yeah, I don't know why he does that, though. I don't know why. Authenticity. Mm. Yeah. Well, and they're going to need some of that because all of them are going to be out of work soon because now it'll all be AI. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Ser seriously, Kevin, you read the latest on AI? Uh, well, I've been reading a lot about AI. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I was talking to Jonas about it yesterday. He called for Father's Day yesterday. And, you know, you can basically put any scenario, type it into AI, and it'll make a movie for you now. Oh, it'll make a movie? Yeah, it, 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 there, there's some, some tweaks that need to be made, and it, you can't really do the, the, the uh, longer stuff right now and the more intricate stuff, but they're getting there. Holy crap. Yeah, so, I, I, you know, at, there, there will be, you know, in, in 10 years, there'll be no more actors. They're done. Well, can AI emote? Can it, can it provide the emotion? Yeah, they'll, they'll get there. Jeez, see, the, see, the only thing that 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 AI struggles with now, but it'll eventually get there, is the creativity component and particularly sense of humor. So you're still going to have to have writers writing those nuances. Mm -hmm. But once the writers pop it in, it's going to spit out video. There's your scene. Yeah, no, uh, Trish uh, does uh, chat GPT for newsletters and stuff and it'll come back with the uh an initial draft she'll read it and she'll be like can you make this funnier and then it'll come back and it might have some quips and stuff in there but no you're right for the most part it ain't that funny no no but you know it will be eventually yeah see the thing is 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 people that are programming ai right ai right now are basically feeding it information to destroy their own job, livelihood, career, killing it. I have said that for 10 years with you. I said, why are we so hell-bent in creating our own demise? Yeah. That's what we're doing. I mean, I, you know, because Jonas was talking to me about it. He said, you know, the AI now, they're, they're feeding, the, you know, lawyers are giving them information on how down the road, Kev, if you have to file for an LLC, file for divorce, file, for, you don't need to hire a lawyer at all. You just have a, a AI put your case together and you submit it. Yeah. And I'm like, why would lawyers be feeding the AI all this information? Because we're lazy now. Yeah. You're going to be obsolete. Yep. And, and, you know, basically, you know, Jonas is in the middle of this because he's like, this is his you know, feel. This is, yeah, this, this is his realm. And he, he basically said, you know, it, 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 to survive this, you've got to learn to harness AI yourself. Uh -huh. You've got to be one of the people that are on top of the food chain developing ways to monetize AI. He said, otherwise, the majority of jobs will be gone. Uh -huh. AI will be able to do it all. And, you know, even though we're not on the radio anymore, I asked him, I said, well, you know, can it do right? And that's where he agreed that it doesn't have a sense of humor like humans do. It'll be hard for that. But they could do our voice, Kev. Oh, yeah. No, I've done that. Yeah. Yeah, I've done that. You know, made a made a character, uh, an AI character with my voice. Oh, yeah, definitely. I've done it with Trump's voice. I've done it with Biden's voice. Yeah, it's it's weird. It. I mean, that's scary. Live from the trailer park, it's the game show that can only be shown on cable. This is Yes, No, or Fuck, with your host, Kenny P. Oh, fuck. Sit down, you bunch of bastards. Our contestants today are Joe and Don. Let's play the fucking game. I'm going to ask you a fucking question. You're going to give me your dumbass fucking answer. And then I'm going to tell you how fucking wrong you fucking are. Here's the fucking question. 
Will the Chiefs blow it out their ass this year? She said, uh, Chiefs, look, folks, here's the deal. And I remember when I met uh, Sitting Bull shortly after I was born. We met in Scranton, Pennsylvania, a real blue-collar town. This is not hyperbole. Sitting Bull explained how he was fighting to keep the white man from pillaging the land of his people. I shared my efforts to keep China from, see, from stealing the jobs of our factory workers. Anyway, we had a common ground. And we said, not on our watch, man. What? The Chiefs, frankly, I like the Chiefs. Good team, very good team, in fact. Andy Reid, Mahomes, Travis Swift, I bet on the Chiefs, I really would, but I can't. And it's sad, it's very sad to see what the Justice Department has done to my finances. They've taken most of my money, or one-tenth of it, if you've seen my own records and believe them. And that's why I can't bet on the Chiefs. Frankly, I can't bet on anything except the Supreme Court giving me total immunity, and that will be a wonderful thing. Fucking son of a bitch. Now, I tell people that I'm a dumbass. You two bastards fucking make me look fucking brilliant. No wonder the fucking country's going to hell in a fucking handbasket. It was a simple fucking yes or no question. That's the name of the fucking game. So guess what? I'm saying this game's fucking over because you're all fucking nuts. And when the Chiefs blowing out their ass this year, because we all know they fucking will, I'll say I fucking told you so. That's it for this week. Join us again next week as we welcome two new contestants, Zuck and Bezos. Oh, God. As they answer the question, is $500 million too much to spend on a boat? Fuck yeah, it is. That's happening next time on Yes, No, or Fuck with Kenny P. Basically, it, it can take, you know, like a minute of, of anybody's voice and make that voice say anything at once. Yeah. Well, didn't they do that with uh, uh, with the either Biden or Trump where they were calling, just cold calling strangers and yeah. saying, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, you don't know anything's real or not. No. But I, I don't understand why we're in such a hurry to make ourselves obsolete. Right. I mean, you're playing right into the hands of evil people wanting humans wiped off the face of the earth. And then what's going to happen What's gonna, when nobody's working anymore? What's going to happen to society? It's going to be the purge, isn't it? It, it? And I think this is the plan is it'll collapse into a, hey, we're going to give you a loaf of bread for your family a week. Ooh, great. Thanks. And then uh, it'll just be like, hey, we can't afford to have you all here. So <laughs> come on in here and take your last shower. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Squid games. Exactly. Uh, exactly. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be Gladiator. Yeah. Squid Games. They'll, they'll, they'll do it for their own amusement. Exactly. Uh, and that's, and we've created that. Ourse- See, like even the people who are smart and like, oh, you know, I know how to program and code all this stuff. I'm the, I'm the, dude, AI is going to do all of the coding. Well, uh, how long ago did what was it that uh, somebody said that, that we will actually be more robot than we will be human? Uh, I read that a long time ago. Well, Elon Musk has already implanted a uh, a device in somebody's head that thinks for them. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, they'll eventually be, and this is what they're working on. This is what the elites want is something where their soul and spirit and their brain can be like captured to continue forever. So they live forever in some kind of robotic embodiment. Somebody said, I think it was four or five years ago, uh, there was a doctor on record that said somebody on this planet living right now will live to be a thousand years old. I, Kev, I would venture to say that there are 600 or so people that are right now on this planet uh-huh. that will live, that will live forever. Wow. They will live forever in some way. Their bodies won't obviously, uh-huh. but, but their spirit, their soul, their brain, their memories, you know. Oh, their original but, body probably won't, but they'll be no, able to regenerate something. Exactly. That, and that's that's the end game. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah the, the 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 elite billionaires, you know, the ones who are older. I mean, I, you know, people like, uh, you know, like Buffett, uh, Buffett and everything. Like that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, it's a little not too gonna, early. But yeah. Little, yeah. Yeah. You were born a little too early. You know, Chase from uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, who just passed away. David, evil motherfucker. Um, he, he just died. He passed away a few years ago. I mean, he, I'm sure he was to come on, man, finish this stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff, you know, that, you know, some of the older elites won't make it. 
Yeah. But, you know, uh, people like Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, yeah. you know, Bezos, about 50-50. Yeah. The, uh, the, those, those are people who may exist and have immortality. The Google folks, Sergey Brin and uh, uh, yeah, they're, they're relatively young. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So. You know, if you're, if you're, you're born late sixties or early seventies or after you have a shot of being one of these 600. Woohoo! Late sixties for us, buddy. <laughs> Wait, Kevin, that's the whole thing is I know what they they're doing. Cause you know, I've read their, their plans. I've read their white paper. So I know what they're doing and I can understand why they're doing what they're doing, but I can't get in the fucking club. <laughs> That's my whole issue. So I got to fight them because <laughs> I want my kids to live and have freedom and a good life. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Boy, we went tangent and hardcore there on the AI. No, I'm, it's, it's fascinating. And it's, it's a part of everyday life now. I mean, yeah, geez, I, I, we have self-driving cars. Yeah. Kev, I, I, I just, I, I like to, to delve into that. What's next. Uh huh. And the world we're in right now in comparison to where we're going to be in 2028, 2029, very different. Dude, because you, you were talking about Tom Cruise movies. Do you go back and like Steven Spielberg when he did AI? How many years ago was that? Way ahead of his time. Oh, totally. How did he know back then? Kev, I, I got into a, a thing, you know, before I got into the Mission Possible, I watched all the Back to the Future movies. Uh huh. Spielberg produced some of those. Well, I actually right. produced all of them. And some of that stuff is like, wow, they predicted 2015 real good. Yes. Yeah. I, and, uh, uh, you know, Spielberg, uh, Kev, I think Spielberg's one of the guys. Obviously, he's older. He's not going to get that immortality ticket. But uh, he's a guy that's uh, on the cutting edge. And so is James Cameron. Yep. Cameron, too. For sure. Cameron, they're, they're on the, uh, but I don't know if they're, Shit, they're he younger. Terminator. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Regenerative. Yeah. Again, you know, it, it comes back to the what was supposed to be just sci-fi fun. Um, our billionaires turned into a to-do list, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. All right. What else we got, Kevin Klein? Uh, I don't know if we have much of anything else. What do you got coming well, up this week? Uh, what do I have coming up this week? I have uh, some important stuff. Okay, good. Can you share? I'm going to work on my tan. Okay. Yeah. I noticed a little, uh, I noticed a little farmer's tan right there near the elbow. Is it really? Well, I might, might've been just the light. Might've just be been the light. Sure. Okay, sh outside of doing this, uh, podcast, I don't wear a shirt anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I, I, everywhere. I, you know, I walk outside the pools right out there and, you know, I'll do my cardio, um, and I, I just don't wear a shirt. It's my service to the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> it's my, I have to apologize. I'm so sorry. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to see a middle-aged man without a shirt on, you know? Oh, the way you look is good, buddy. All right, man. I'm yeah. It's the midlife crisis thing, man. Ah. Like I said, like I've always said, father time in the end, he always wins. He's 30 billion and oh. <laughs> I just want to kick his ass a couple times before he takes me out. There you go. Yeah. You know, actually, he's going to end up being 31 billion and 600 <laughs> <laughs> from what we learned today. Exactly. Uh, hey, if y'all would like and follow and download, subscribe, give us a rating. We would appreciate the heck out of that. Plus, we've got some great merchandise. Go to the uh, Tuttle and Klein Facebook page and order some merchandise. What do you have coming up yourself, Kevin Klein? What's the uh, fuzzy Mike have in store for us? It's going to be a memorial for my little dog. I yeah. love it. Are you going to have some clips from the mayor of, of Sconeyville videos that you did back in yesteryear? I am. Yeah, for sure. All right. That's, that'll be great, Kev. I'm looking forward to that. So Thanks, you'll man. get to see, you'll get to see uh, Pinto yep. uh, immortalized in, in Klein's video. And then you'll see a uh, Klein middle-aged guy weeping openly. Probably that's what he does. Most definitely was crying before our episode today. <laughs> For, forget about, forget about Tuttle and Klein. We should be called the middle-aged shirtless guy and the middle-aged open weeper. <laughs> Macho and weepy. <laughs>
I was I was thinking douchey and weepy, but I like yours. I like... <laughs> Later, man. That's it for this episode of the Tuttle and Klein Show. See you this Wednesday for an all-new episode. And you can get more Klein on his podcast, The Fuzzy Mike with new episodes on Tuesday. Stay fuzzy, friends. And thanks for listening to the Tuttle and Klein Show. Yo. All right, take the yo out. <laughs>